Hey everybody, good morning. Thank you so much for joining me on this edition of Down to Earth. It's the show in which we talk about the issues that matter and we talk about all sorts of things. And I don't know about you, but if anybody was watching the news yesterday and saw how the Iowa caucuses just I don't know what happened. Can they still tell us what happened within the Democratic Party? The Republicans seem to have their thing together because Trump is still their candidate. So they're like, hey, oh, <laughs> and with the Democrats, it seems to me that they probably were hacked. Is that a Russian thing? Is, is that what happened there? Was it the Russians? They didn't see that one coming. As usual, the Demo you can count on the Democratic Party to be caught off guard. All the rhetoric, all the grandstanding and the pontificating that the Democratic Party is famous for, there is one thing that you can count on is what? They will be caught off guard. They never seem to have their act together. They never seem to pay attention to the details. Look, if Trump doesn't want Biden, if Trump went as far as going to uh, Ukraine to influence Ukrainian politics to get Biden out of the game, why do you think he wouldn't try to do something locally here? That's the thing with the Democratic Party. They, I don't know where their focus is. They listen to, this is why I don't know if they'll ever form a government because they listen to the people, they listen, the people whom they listen to are not grounded. These people don't have their ears to the ground. They're always in another freaking realm, in a whole other world. This is why it's a waste of time. It's a total waste of time. The issues that matter, that they should pay attention to, they never pay attention to. So I think it's going to be a Republican government this time, next time, next time, next time into perpetuity because the Democratic Party can't get their act together. And the Republicans this morning are sitting back and laughing. Don't you think? The Republicans are laughing. <laughs> They're like, oh, 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 oh. And I can't say that I believe them. I can't say that I believe them. Right? It's, it's ridiculous, right? The Iowa caucuses, who could believe that? When was the last time you've ever seen something in something as simple as that? The, the Democrats just didn't have their act together. They didn't pay attention. Why do you think they weren't gonna shirk around with the elections? You stupid boat, you've spent the last four years talking about Russian interference and hacking and you really thought they weren't going to do it? That's because they don't pay attention to the issues that matter. But you know who does? Trump and his crew. They have those details down knit pat. <laughs> they keep their ears to the ground and they have that down. <laughs> it's crazy. And this is just what? February. Wait until you see what happens by August. It's going to be unbelievable, right? Wow. And many of you are like, here he is. And I'm like, yeah. So this is an interesting day because it's black history month right and i know some hoteps are out there who like to talk about all kinds of conspiracy theories but as for me i just like to stick with the facts i, I like to read what the facts tell me and develop my own analysis based on what the facts tell me i've been a student of history for a long time and i have studied the history of the world of europe and i've also studied the history of the americas and the history of the caribbean so with that being said, I had to put that into context. I, I want to explore today the history of slavery and the idea of reparations. Because it seems to me that at some point this is going to become an issue. Because the more people learn about it, the more people are aware, the more knowledge is shared, is the more we are going to, people are going to insist on having some sort of discussion and having not just a discussion, but some action around reparations. At the end of slavery, I believe it was President Lincoln who promised 40 acres and a mule to slaves who had been enslaved. Since that never happened, because Jim Crow laws in the South uh, became the reign of the day by rogue men and women who determined that they were not going to give back to Africans and descendants of Africans whom they had brought from Africa to be enslaved in the Americas, they determined they were not going to address it. But over time, the issue is gaining traction because now the descendants of slave owners themselves are looking at it with a view to saying, maybe we need to do something about this. 
So I want to tell you some things that I learned recently that I want to share with you so that you'll be a little bit, have some knowledge and specific kind of knowledge about it. Is I invite your participation. You can participate in this program by dialing. Let me tell you what my call-in number is. I keep forgetting to say that. It's 516-387-1463. So if you want to be heard on air, not just responding. Most people respond to me by typing on uh, Twitter. I perhaps have disengaged some of the functions because people tend to troll. And this is a serious discussion because there are people who want to let your voice be heard. And I want to hear what the public has to say. Right? So if you want to call in, it's 516-387-1463 and let your voices be heard. Right? So slavery happened. We can uh, agree on that. Uh, white people from Europe and who are also, uh, who have descendants in the Americas, especially in North America and South America at the time and Central America, decided that they had an available labor pool that they could benefit from. So they went to Africa, took people by force. It's what we would refer to today as human trafficking. They stripped people off their tribal identities and their local identities by force with guns blazing, put them on a boat and took them to the new world and packed them like sardines. They didn't give them a luxury cruise aboard the SS slave ship to, to, to Georgia, but they gave them a hard time. A lot of people didn't make it in fact, the Atlantic Ocean is the burial ground for a lot of Africans who did not make it on the journey. Some people would rather, when they realized what they were about to face, they would rather die than face certain death at the hands of slave owners. Slavery, it's its own form of evil. And this is why today we refer to human trafficking as modern day slavery. Because when I look at trafficking today, it seems they adopted the playbook of slavery. They use the same methods to acquire people. They use the same methods of enslavement to ensure that they always have a labor pool and a sex pool from which to make their money, right? So there are some uh, correlations, points there that are interesting to look at. But for right now, I wanna focus on traditional slavery. Did you know what I'm saying is recorded in the Bible? Yeah, I have read the Bible to in addition to historical tombs yes in addition to a lot of history books i've read a lot of history books right uh this is usually the defense that people have about slavery that it was done in the bible and i want to tell you that slavery was never sanctioned by god that was a tradition of men right god didn't tell anybody go get slaves men decided that i can always get people and pay them less. It seems to me that there are two groups of people who through history have always been enslaved, the Jews and blacks. And frankly, I don't know why the Jews and the blacks don't get along right now, right? I, I'm still on YouTube. I'm actually on YouTube right now. So if you want to tune in, if, the, if this platform is unstable, which Twitter is, I'm on YouTube. It's more stable, nothing happens. It's just straight recording, right? But slavery happened right? It did happen. Uh, so I want to ease my white supporters. Look, it happened. Let's find a way out of this, right? That's all we're saying. Just find a way out of it. Cause we all live here now. We didn't, your, you didn't do it. I didn't do it. I, my ancestors had to deal with it. Your ancestors created it. So we're here. We got to deal with it, right? Because the next generation they're coming and they're going to want their money. And they're going to want not only what's promised to them, but they're going to see it. They're going to see it. I didn't say the Jews were, the, were, were on the slave ships. It was blacks who were on slave ships, right? But the next generation are going to see it not just as a form of injustice, but that this is something that you should take care of. And this is something that happened without their ancestors' consent. And therefore, it's something that they should be remunerated for. They're also going to discuss repatriation. Wow, Twitter force closed on me. Great Twitter. I can't log into Twitter.
So Twitter forced schools on me because they don't want to talk about slavery and repatriation. That's fine. We're going to talk about it nonetheless. So if you can find me on Twitter, I'm on YouTube, so head on over, right? Twitter doesn't want to talk about this because this is something that is, is, is problematic, right? This is very problematic for, uh, for many people in America today. So here's some statistics. So I'm going to read you some facts and then we can talk about them, right? Uh, uh, reparations is extremely divisive. And the talk around reparations is always divisive. As a matter of fact, statistically, 85% of whites do not support, oppose it and 74% of blacks support it. In fact, a bill called HR 40 has been in the House of Representatives for over 30 years and has not received widespread support. I think traditionally, uh, Democratic uh, political candidates say they will talk about it. Even Mike Bloomberg now is saying it's something he will talk about. Right? Ah, uh, hey, you're here now. Okay, good. Because Twitter force closed. <laughs> right? So here are some things that happened. And I know this is going to be very, very uh, painful because none of us, Twitter isn't even giving me the option to go live. Would you believe it? Right? Uh, because nobody, none of us want to visit this because it's extremely painful. Right? But there are some things that we need to keep in mind. There were four institutions that participated and benefited from slavery. Churches, municipal governments, corporations, and the US military. That's a historical fact. We just never looked into it before. We just talked because at the time we were focused on getting out of Jim Crow and getting out of getting some civil rights in place. But now that that has died down, we need to look at what happened how did it happen? And this is the conversation that needs to take place. I'm going to tell you some things that probably are going to be hurtful, but just brace yourself, right? Southern churches of every denomination owned slaves. That's something to think about. Southern churches of every denomination. The Catholic Church, get this, the Catholic Church was the largest institution of slave holders in the Americas. Episcopal and Presbyterian pastors and ministers hired out enslaved people to neighboring employers. So if they had they had slaves whom they didn't have to pay to do the work for them, right? So what they did was they hired them out to neighboring planters to make money off them. Episcopalian and Presbyterian pastors. Princeton Theological Seminary owned slaves. Princeton Theological Seminary is a revered institution because it's part of what was called the New Jersey College, which is now called Princeton University. It's an Ivy League college, if I'm if I if I'm uh, if I'm if I'm certain, right? Most people think highly of Princeton, right? Guess who else participated in it? Remember we talked about corporations, right? Insurance companies sold policies on the lives of enslaved people and on the road. That means they insured slavery voyages. And the last but not least, the United States military paid its officers with a monthly stipend to, to cover salaries for their personal servants. But what the officers did, if the servants were slaves, they could keep the money for themselves. Guess what? In the National Archives, they have uncovered the vouchers of the officers who had to submit the vouchers for reimbursement from the army. I just wanted you to sit there. So that's slavery. It happened. It's a historical fact. Not because black people are whining not because black people don't have anything else to do, but just like to sit there and whine and you wonder why things happen. But this is history. By the way, this article was written by a white man. So don't think it's some black scholar somewhere who did this. Because for most of us, it is too painful for us to talk about or encounter. I found it very difficult to read when I was doing my research on this. 
So are slavery reparations possible? Yeah. The federal government is probably never going to do anything about it because the federal government is kind of like, they, as you can see, H.R. 40 never went anywhere. So rather than take on the federal government, what's happening is that smaller groups are doing what they can to, 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 to restore. It, but is it going to be enough? Like, for instance, Georgetown University, a group of students at Georgetown University in 2018 decided that they were going to create a fund to benefit descendants of 300 slaves who were sold, were owned by the college. Georgetown University is a revered educational institution in this country. In fact, uh, <laughs> I, I can't say it, I'm struggling. Princeton Theological Seminary has agreed to pay back 27.6 million to fund scholarships for descendants of slaves. And it goes on and on and on and on and on and on the thing that got to me when i read it was that southern churches of every denomination owned slaves and you wonder why martin luther king could not get any support from churches when he was trying to advance the cause of enslaved people or descendants of enslaved people. The reason why is because it's rooted and entrenched in the church's philosophy, how they dealt with people because the church had a lot to hide. The church pretended like slavery didn't happen, but they were active participants because there's historical fact to prove it. Churches owned slaves and participated in slavery at the same time preaching the gospel message of Jesus Christ to set the captive free. No wonder they kept people from reading because if the people had read the Bible, they would discover that slavery was not just, was morally wrong. So you know how people, so, you know, people like to say, well, you have to follow law and order. It's the law of the land. But when the law was overturned, the Bible was still saying it was morally wrong. And yet the practitioners of slavery continue to benefit from it. This is why we draw parallels between slavery and human trafficking today. Because human trafficking evidence, evidently, you know, the evidence of it is that it, human trafficking is modern slavery. They take the playbook. You gather people, you enslave them, and you put them out there. Right? And now we have to ask ourselves, a question we really are asking ourselves is what now? What do we do now? What do we do with this body of information that we have come across? What do we do now that we know that this happened? It seems to me that reparations is something to think about. It's something that has to be ancient. Maybe it's not my generation who are going to hold anyone accountable. Maybe it's the generation afterwards when they think back on what it must have come. Because let's face it, if, 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 if I go to work today and when you go to work today, don't they have to pay us for what we do? They pay you for your labor, right? Right. So in a bygone era, you didn't pay those people for their labor that made you wealthy? This is how the next generation is looking at it. Because the next generation have begun asking questions of me. And they're like, well, people worked and didn't get paid. How is that? If I go to work today, the law says you have to pay me. So how did that happen? And I think the, 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 the problem that most people face is the moral conundrum. The moral conundrum is here I am professing to be good, doing good deeds, but at the same time, I don't want you to look too far back in my history because of it. And you have to ask yourself, how come the church participated in slavery? It, it just doesn't seem to, 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 make, uh, to make for good uh, preaching sense because on one, in one sense you're preaching a gospel that hypothetically liberates people's minds and their souls. But what about their hands and their bodies? We know that slavery had elements of sexual violence in it. People were beaten and enslaved. It, it's, slavery was particularly vicious. The, the story goes on and on when you think about it because I want to draw a parallel here with what happened in Europe, right? What happened in Europe, because I have 
I do have listeners all over the world. I have listeners in the UK, in the Netherlands, Germany, uh, Spain, Denmark, right? And the UK. So what happened in Europe was that after World War II, descendants of, of Jews who were in the Holocaust and who were forced to work with on v, in VW and Siemens factories VW and Siemens quietly came to a settlement with those descendants. It, 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 it makes you wonder. And this is why I, I feel for, for, for whites who have issues with this. Our ancestors didn't think into the future, did they? They didn't think beyond the here and now. Because think about it. World War II was not that, was not that long ago, was it? Barely a hundred years ago, Right? But at that time, they were enslaving people in the factories. And at that time, we had radio communications, right? People were uh, sailing to and fro across the Atlantic. There was communication and travel between countries. There were newspapers and radio. So at what point did those folks not think that enslaving Jews in a factory to work was not going to be a historical fact and some accountability later on. It tells us that our ancestors really didn't think things through. And to some extent, the folks who are millennials today and Generation Z do have a point because they say we have, are not leaving them with anything but debt because we don't think through our decision-making. People saw there were rapacious capitalists during the time of slavery who saw opportunity to make money. That's all they saw. The new world presented them with golden opportunities. You don't believe me? Read history for yourself. Mexico gave us the Aztec culture and the Mayan culture. When Spaniards from Spain arrived in Mexico, all they saw, they saw these people building huge monuments of gold. They were like, oh my God, I can take that gold back to Spain and be rich. That's all they saw were opportunities. They began enslaving the people who saw them just as explorers and human beings who we could shake hands with and work out the deal. Instead, the people from Europe saw opportunities. So when they when they came and you know people are coming from different climates and so on, and they weren't accustomed to the to the, the diseases that the native peoples had mastered because of exposure, they decided we gotta go and get some people to work these lands over here because there's a lot of money to be made. If we take this money back to the crown, the crown is going to pay us a lot of money. We're going to be rich. And so they were rapacious capitalists. Let's be clear, the people who were explorers were not of moral upstand uh, were not morally upstanding. Right? These were opportunists and mercenaries who were looking to get out of Europe anyway. Europe didn't want them. They didn't have any place for them. They didn't fit into the society. Go to the new world. Go do something and do something for the crown. The crown will reward you. Get out of my hair. In other words, get out of my hair. I detest you because you are not fitting into their uh, unique perspective of what society should look like. So they were. They came to the new world with their own agenda. Once they saw that they could make money, go back to their country and be rich, they were like, I could be a king right here. Let me set up shop right here. Who needs to take money back over there? I'm not going to work and make all this money and then take it back for the king and queen to live in splendor. And I live in what? Poverty? To heck with that. So they stayed and made the new world their home. The Americas. When we talk about the Americas, we're talking about North and South America and Central America. I think we here in North America tend to forget that there are other parts of the Americas. This whole thing was called the Americas by the explorers who came, the, the European explorers who came. If you don't like it, tough. It is what it is. America is not going to change its name. That's for sure. Because you just don't like the fact that the Americas is a name given by, by, by colonial and, and European explorers. It is what it is. Right? So the Americas include North America, Central America, and South America. So who are the countries? What are the countries in, so in Central America? Let me help you there. Mexico, Guatemala, Belize, Honduras, Nicaragua. Yeah, we're clear. Those are the countries 
in, in Central America. Mexico is part of North America. So the country south of Mexico. So North America includes Canada, the United States, and Mexico. Central America is that little slip that connects North and South America. So it's one big landmass all the way from Alaska through Canada, through the United States, the 48, the lower 48, like we like to call ourselves, right? Attached to Mexico that runs straight down into the tip of South America to the Gulag Archipelago in Chile. Right? So when you look at the Americas, the Americas was a lot represented, a lot of financial investment and interest for European settlers. They also refer to parts of the Americas as parts of the Caribbean. You know that, right? Right? So the British Caribbean where I grew up was also considered part of the Americas because especially the country I grew up in grew sugarcane, which was gold for the British crown, right? They made so much money off sugarcane. And the people who worked on the sugarcane farms were slaves. Similarly, in the, in the United States, in the South, the people who worked on factories, the people who worked on the plantations were slaves, rice and cotton. That's what created the commerce. By 1871, the economy of the United States had become the number one economy in the world. So we've been at this for a long time. We've been at the seat of world power for a while. Naturally, we built up ourselves as any empire would. We had the money. We could build up ourselves. We were self-sufficient. We really never wanted to participate in World War I or anything like that because you're over there, we're over here. But we didn't have a choice because we had trading partners because we traded with everybody else and we had interests to defend, right? So America is great because of the enslavement of people. Our wealth was built on that. I know a lot of folks don't want to hear that, but you and I didn't create this. This happened in spite of us. What we have now is the legacy of it and how are we going to treat it? What are we going to do about it? We need to talk about it. Because my ancestors, though they originate from the Caribbean, some of them had actually come to the lower United States to participate. There are records to prove that. So we all are a part of it. Now, I have a funny ancestry. I do have an ancestry of people who are European. So it's kind of put me in, in the mix. But that is emblematic and symptomatic of the problem. The problem is that this happened. And for a long time, it seems like nobody wanted to confront it because it makes every one of us look bad. It makes all of us look bad. I, am a, I feel badly that the church who professes freedom and peace on earth participated in the enslavement of people. Thank you. Right? It, it, it's crazy. It is so crazy. Wow. The church participated in the enslavement of people. I'm not happy about that because the church as a group preaches Peace on earth, goodwill to all men. Seriously? Seriously. But they did. The church, the Catholic church, was the largest slaveholding institution in the Americas. Seems to me like there's a lot to pay back. I don't think they will ever do it. Do you? Probably not. It's too much to pay back. So when people look at slavery and reparations, that, that they tend to look at it from this perspective. What is it that, how could we do this? Well, first you have to prove. Thank you, thank you, right? First we, you have to prove that you are a descendant of slavery. And if you look at the color of my skin and other people who are black, it's kind of hard to say that I have to prove that because the people who were native to the Americas were Indians 
or what we call Indians, the native folk, they don't look like this, right? And I know some of you all are, are probably going to have some issues with this, especially if your ancestors are European or you're of European descent, but this is a problem that is not unique to the United States. It's not unique to the United States. They're already discussed this in Europe with the Jews and some of the companies who benefited from, from, from Jews being enslaved during World War II. So this is not a unique problem. It's just that that was a shorter time period than slavery. Slavery was more than, was more, was too long. Even after slavery was declared illegal internationally, people were still doing it. And insurance companies were also participants. Now, none of us really have good relationships with insurance companies because we know that they're all about money, right? But for insurance companies to participate, they, they, they insured slaves, y'all, and insured slave voyages. Are you kidding me? Some of these things to me, you and I are the same. I mean, some of these things I never thought about in depth. I just looked at slavery as a historical fact that happened and what can be done to prevent it from not happening in the future. That has been my perspective on slavery. Maybe this is why I kind of got drawn into human trafficking because I was like, if you don't curtail it now, human trafficking could become something that is promotable, right? Something that everyone is going to say, well, I get something out of it, so I don't have any issues with it. So when you go to lawmakers to change laws or to impact legislation that could protect people who are enslaved, I might ha I have a harder time because everybody benefits from it somehow. They're getting some kind of free labor or they're getting sexual gratification. Human traffickers today, the biggest thing they promote is sexual gratification. They just hit a man right where he can relate to it. So every guy standing there like, aha, uh -huh, you mean I could get sex for free? You mean I could get sex that will gratify me how I want it, when I want it, how I want it? So human traffickers know exactly how to go for the juggler. They're like, man, if I can get to a guy's gratification, I got him. So they look at it from a different perspective, but at the same time, we have a component of human trafficking called labor trafficking, where enslaved people, people are brought here and work under subhuman conditions, and they're further dehumanized because of their ethnicity, because of their nation of origin, by working conditions that are not in keeping with the standard and in keeping with the law that prevails over the country. This is why this country, I don't know about anybody else, this country, the United States, says human trafficking is wrong. You know why we are also saying it? Because we have a history that we don't want ever repeated. Lord have mercy. Absolutely. In the, in, in the UK, uh, they are going to introduce laws, of course, because we're all looking at it like, whoa, whoa, stop. It's modern times. You see how we have evolved? We have evolved now. Even people, most people, most white folks are just uncomfortable about the idea of it because they're going to have to revisit it. Deep down inside of them, they feel some moral accountability but they don't want to visit it because then they're gonna to have to go look in their past. I dare say if you grew up, most white folks who come from the South, if you go look in your history, at one point or another, your ancestors participated in slavery. It is a fact, you don't get mad, don't get upset, don't, it, 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 it happened. You didn't have any choice in it. They didn't think through the generations to come. They were just thinking of the moment and being rich in the moment. There are many things that are comparable to that today. Human trafficking and sex trafficking is just one of them. That's an intersection that is proving over time. So what should we do to prevent this from happening? Because here's the thing with, with slavery. Just like in slavery, they grabbed someone out of a village. That's what traffickers do today. They can grab your child. They can grab mine. They can grab your niece. They can grab mine. I have a million nieces. They can grab anybody. You think I want to hear about that? Right? 
that's the same danger. So we all are in this thing together. We're all in this boat. Our ancestors left us with this thing to deal with. And we have to deal with it, right? Why is it now they introduce laws to become reactive instead of proactive? Because it's too late. We never, we never thought that human trafficking would happen, that modern slavery would happen. We never saw it, never saw it coming. It's one of those things that we never saw coming. We thought it would not happen. So today's laws, if, if you ever talk to police or anybody in law enforcement about sex trafficking and human trafficking, it's kind of like, mm, because we never saw it coming. It kind of pulled us in a different direction. We're left like, and every time you think you figure it out, they come up with something new because they've been doing it for a while longer. And I dare say they are smarter at it because they've been investing in it for a while. And we're still here trying to, by the time we catch up to this point, they are a hundred steps ahead. And it's easy for them to get away with it today because they have specific targets. Just like when the slave owners went to Africa, they looked for the people who were going to smile with them, the people who didn't see any harm in it. Well, it's the same thing traffickers do today. They look for young girls whose uh, blinders might not be on, right? They might not be on, they might find a susceptibility to being influenced by peers. So they send someone who looks like them, sounds like them, whom they can relate to, to lure them and seduce them into it. They find someone online. Kids are online all the time. So they can find them. It's the same thing with slavery. Do you see the resemblance? And so when, when modern slavery started happening, we were tardy to the party because we didn't see it coming. We didn't think anybody would do something like that. Prostitution was one thing. Organized prostitution was a whole different thing. But you're going to keep people in chains? take away their identity, strip them of who they are, make them so susceptible to drugs. We never thought that would happen. See, in slavery, they beat them as a form of enforcement. And the laws were in, the, were in favor of the plantation owners. Today, the laws are in favor of all. So it's harder for a trafficker. A trafficker can't hide and do his thing publicly because we're all going to be aware of it because the laws are not in his favor today my fear is that if we don't do something about curtailing this then it will eventually be people will be numb to it because like i said the traffickers get to a man's gratification he's gonna earn something from it oh really he's gonna feel good so he's like okay what are we talking about here Slavery was all about money. And so after slavery ended, the planters rose up and said at any cost, we have to keep these people to be free labor because if we have to pay them for labor, we're not gonna make money. So they hated people because they viewed people as subhuman. And then they had Bible verses, they found verses in the Bible that they dared, dared to say condoned it. That's not true. The Bible is a book of history and people's experiences. The Bible did not condone history, condone slavery. It reported on it and it discussed it and says don't do it. But you couldn't tell a planner that. He used specific scriptures from the Bible to preach to the slaves as to why he should keep them down. Did you know that slaves who worked for the Baptist church also went to service? Did you know that? This is why you have certain divisions of churches in the, in, the, in the black community, like the African Methodist Episcopalian. They're letting you know that they're a form of the Methodist and a form of Episcopalian form of worship, but they are African because they're descendants of Africans. Are you hearing me? The same people who were enslaved still fell in love with the God of the slave master when they began reading the Bible for themselves and realized that what the slave master told them was not true about how God thought about them. I know it's uncomfortable and I'm sorry, but it's history. 
I didn't create it, neither did you. We're sort of here and we have to deal with it. I'm done with Twitter, right? We are here and we have to deal with it. It's not pleasant. It's not something that uh, I, you know, that is good. But we're the generation that kind of have to start the ball because the next generation, they will deal with it. And they're going to deal with it, right? Because they're gonna ask the same question. Why? You know something? There is no answer to that. There's no perfect answer, none whatsoever. When my children were little, they used to ask questions perpetually. Like, why does this happen? Why? And I used to say, because why has a long tail and it ends in a V? And then I would have thought that that satisfied that. And one of them would say, huh? But V has a tail too. So there's a point at the end of V. So tell me why that point is there. Oh my gosh. I can't, there are no answers to why slavery happened. The people who were alive at the time, who initiated and practiced slavery, maybe they could explain why they felt it necessary to do that. Why did they take joy in it? Because it seems to me that it's human nature to always want to be superior to someone else. It's all, it's human nature to always want to be, to make someone else feel inferior so you can feel superior. It seems to be human nature. And so we were always looking for people whom we could feel superior to. We were always looking for people for whom this worked. And I know I'm hitting the nail on the head because Twitter is forced closing so I can't, nobody can see me on Twitter, right? Because they don't want this going out into the stratosphere because this is something that is controversial because it makes everyone feel uncomfortable. Even for black folks, this is uncomfortable to face. My mother's generation never faced it. They couldn't face it because they would have to admit that at some point they were powerless and dehumanized, even though you look like any other human being on the planet. So they couldn't deal with it. Maybe they too had more anger, so it, it probably was not gonna work out well. My grandmother's generation never dealt with it because it's the same thing. It was bad for everyone all around. And then in the country where I grew up, everybody is kind of mixed up. So I don't know how my grandmother's generation was going to deal with it. When her father came from Scotland, what was she going to say? <laughs> he married someone who had just come out of slavery. <laughs> right? So I'm, I'm not casting shit. I'm talking about my ancestry. I can't talk about anybody else. I'm just talking about mine. My grandmother's father came from Scotland. He seemed to like the ladies, right? It is what it is. I didn't, I wasn't there. I, I, I am the descendant, is all I can say. My father's father came from Ireland. What am I gonna do about that? Are you hearing me? <laughs> he liked the ladies too. Hence, here we are. <laughs> We're all here, <laughs> right? So, so uh, where did I grow up? I grew up in the British Caribbean in Jamaica, right? And, and so, do you see what I'm saying? So we all, all of us, and, and we got to understand that slavery was a worldwide problem. To this day, slavery still is. There are still parts of the world where enslaved people still don't have a voice. If you go to the United Arab Emirates and other places, you will find that there are other people from other lands who work there as domestics, right? Who work there, but at least it's voluntary. They're paid now. Once upon a time, it wasn't. So what I'm saying is it's human nature to always feel like we're in a dominant relationship over another human being. Why? I don't know. Folks, I don't know. It, it's part of human nature. I, I don't speculate. I'm not gonna speculate on what my great-grandfather or my father's father did. Please do not speculate, right? It's human nature. It is what it is, folks. It is what it is, and I can't help it, right? So here we are. They've left us with this issue, this conundrum, what are we going to do about it? 
what can we do about it? We have to start at the local level because this is a political issue. So start right where you are. We gotta start having this conversation. We have to, for the next generation. For there to be peace, we gotta ratify. And here's the thing, if anybody out there is a lawyer thinking about this or anything like that, go investigate how the descendants of Holocaust survivors got VW and Siemens Corporation in Germany to pay reparations to descendants of Holocaust survivors. They got them bastards to pay. I used to like VW. I ain't driving one anymore. Nah. Nah. Just nah. But then I have to think about Land Rovers. I drive one. Uh, probably used <laughs> labor. <laughs> Slave labor. <laughs> probably. Do you see where I'm coming from? This is a deep issue. And it's one that a lot of folks won't take on. It's one that a lot of people, a lot of people who are practicing don't even want to deal with because they're like, Harriet, don't even start. It makes us all uncomfortable. And in today's world, because politics, all politics are local, it perhaps has to do with arrangements and agreements that certain black leaders have evoked and involved with other leaders in the community to make sure that no one ever talks about it because it, it, it makes everyone uncomfortable. But it's, it's our collective past. And we have a role to play to make it right. We have a role to play. You may, we may not go to 40 acres and a mule, but there is some redress that needs to happen. It's not just an acknowledgement that this happened, but how about lifting the economic oppression of people? How about, we? and this is why it has to happen, because the same factors that cause slavery to happen still cr happen to create today a mindset in people where black Americans are still ostracized from the mainstream and still are not viewed as mainstream and are not given widespread opportunities throughout corporate culture as well as locally and at the national level. And this is why this conversation has to take place. Are we not all slaves now even, even if we have a choice? It's a matter of election of thought, I would think. Yeah? Someone is asking, are we not all slaves now even if do we have a choice? I think it's a matter of election of thought where if you still go to work, you're paid for it, but that's as a result of slavery. You get paid now for the work that you do, right? So it, it, it's how do you see yourself? This is why uh, thought leaders like Jesus Christ and to several millennia later, Bob Marley say, free yourselves in your mind. How do you think and see yourself? You can't subscribe to a thought process that says, I'm a slave. Then you won't think independently because then it will kill you because we're not, as human beings, we're not created to be slaves. As human beings, we are created to be independent of thought and want to have some say in our destiny. To be a slave means you don't have a say in your outcome, whether it's your daily outcome or the rest of your life. Did you know human trafficking victims don't live long? They rarely survive the post-traumatic stress even after they emerge from slavery. Well, do you wonder why in the black community today, people die prematurely from preventable diseases? It's sort of like the trauma is evident and is laid inert in our DNA. Later on in the month of February, I'm going to do, bring someone on who can talk about the story of epigenetics and what epigenetics is. It was actually done on Holocaust survivors after World War II. And when we looked at it, we saw where the correlation to African Americans who had experienced slavery. Do you see what I'm saying? It is fundamentally what it is it's uncomfortable but it is what it is 
Makes no sense you go hey ho and carry on about it. Makes no sense you start thinking, well, it is what it is. It already happened. But there is some redress. We have to change it, right? We have to look at it from a human perspective that, man, this was wrong. And those companies that benefited, they should do something about making sure the descendants of people are compensated for what happened. Right now, there is an, a case that uh, human trafficking survivors are suing a specific about three hotel chains because they participated in human trafficking. Those hotel chains knew that victims were in their places and they participated. They rented rooms to traffickers and the staff of the hotel knew these girls needed help and never called the police, never helped. They are just as culpable. It's a different day. Do you see where I'm saying? It's a different day. It's not what it was, right? So what I would like us to do, there's some healing, yeah? But the healing is going to come from all of us recognizing and acknowledging that our ancestors jacked this up and left us. But like everything else, we have to fix it. So it's going to be us and the generations after to fix it so that it, it's our collective issue, our collective problem. So it doesn't become a problem for the next because it's setting a dangerous precedent for all others to follow, right? My name is Harriet Kimmick. This has been Down to Earth. Thank you so much for participating and thank you so much for being a part of my show this morning on our experience. Make sure you join us again tomorrow when we talk about the issues that matter. And for more information on what we do, please visit HarrietCamac.com as well as go view our page on Anchor FM where you can be a contributing supporter to our broadcast. You can also find more about our podcast on any podcast platform. We're available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podcast Addicts, Breaker, Breaker, Overcast, anywhere there is a podcast platform, we are there. So thank you so much for participating. Thank you for your comments. Uh, my viewer is Mr. Trevor Stimes. Thank you so very much for your participation. I enjoyed interacting with you. Thank you so much. See you again. Bye-bye for now. Thanks, everybody. This is Harriet Kamek with Down to Earth. Thanks so much for listening and for participating. This truly has been one of the most difficult podcasts that I've ever done. But it's Down to Earth, and it is the issues that matter. Thank you so much, everybody. Be blessed.